waves add arithmetically, resulting in constructive and destructive wave interference. Many phenomena of nature and many devices involve the sum of two waves that have the same amplitude, wavelength, and frequency, travel along the same line, but are out of phase with each other. The red wave above is the sum of the blue and green waves below. When the green wave is shifted to the left, the red sum increases. If the green wave is shifted to the right by half a wavelength, then the red sum shrinks to zero as the two waves are everywhere 180 degrees out of phase and their sum will be zero everywhere. This is said to be fully destructive interference between the two waves. If one wave is shifted by an integer number of full wavelengths, then the two waves are in phase, their sum is double either alone, and we have fully constructive interference between the two waves. The number n of waves that fit in a path of length L is n equal L over lambda. For example, if L equal 3.3 meters and lambda equal 1 half meters, then n equal 3.3 over 1 half equals 6.6 .6 wavelengths. Two overlapping waves can be out of phase if their path lengths differ. The difference is delta L equals L2 minus L1. As their phase difference phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, their path difference delta L goes from 0 to lambda. We have phi over 2 pi equals delta L over lambda. For example, a path difference delta L equal 0.3 lambda corresponds to phi over 2 pi equal 0.3, which is a phase difference phi equal 0 0.6 pi. Using m as an integer 0, 1, 2, 3, when the path difference between two overlapping waves is an integer number of wavelengths, then the sum is high, loud, bright, or a maximum depending on whether we're adding water waves, sound waves, light waves, or some other waves. When the path difference is an integer number of half wavelengths, then the two waves add up to a low, quiet, dim, or a minimum. The drips from these two faucets are hitting the surface of the water at the same time, so there is no phase difference in the outgoing waves. If we look at a particular location, there is a difference in distance to each of the two faucets. This path difference can make a phase difference. When the path difference is equal to an integer number of full wavelength, then there is a high spot in the sum of the two waves. When a particular point has a path difference that's an integer number of half wavelength, such as all points along this line, then the sum of the two waves will have a minimum. These two speakers emit sound waves. At some locations, the path difference results in loud spots. Along this line, the sum results in quiet spots. As you walk around a sports stadium, you're receiving sound from several different speakers and may have noticed that the sum becomes quiet at some locations. These two lasers are emitting light waves. If we place a viewing screen on the right, then we can see bright regions and dim regions. Page 912 in the PDF contains this representation. To reconstruct this from the start, here are the two point sources separated by distance d. These two point sources are represented as these two source slits. The viewing screen is placed a distance l away. Along the viewing screen, vertical distance y is measured from the center line to a point of interest on the screen. R1 is the distance from that point on the screen to the top source. 
and R2 is the distance to the lower source. The path difference delta is R2 minus R1. This triangle has hypotenuse D, which is the distance between the two sources. The path difference delta is also D sine theta. In the applications that we'll see, theta is very tiny, like a hundredth of a degree. So the point P is actually very, very close to the left-hand wall. In this triangle, we have tan theta equals rise over run equals y over l. Remember that point P should really be right at the left-hand wall. When our tiny angles are measured in radians, we can replace tan theta with sine theta or theta. And this means that our path difference, d sine theta, can be written as d times y over l. We subscript y with the letter m to indicate the order number. The center of the screen is equidistant from both sources, and so we'll have a maximum. This is said to be the m equals zero central max. Above that, and also below that, is the m equals zero minimum, where the path difference is one half wavelength. Next are the m equal one maximums, which occur where the path difference is equal to one full wavelength. We have d sine theta equals d times theta in radians, and it equals d times y over l, and it's also equal to the path difference, which is an integer number of full wavelengths or an odd half integer number of half wavelengths, depending on the situation. The third max has m equal three and is at y equals three lambda l over d. The fifth minimum has m equal five and is at theta five equal five plus a half lambda l over d. Adjacent maxima or minima are equally spaced by a distance equal to twice the distance to the zeroth minimum. The width of the central maximum is twice the distance to the zeroth minimum. If a double slit apparatus is immersed in water, which has index of refraction n equal 1.33, then we replace lambda with lambda over n. In the lab, we see this series of bright and dark spots when we send laser light through a pair of tiny slits. 